Being able to source your pain and understand where your back pain is coming from is such an important piece of the equation. Hi, I'm Dr. Nick. I am a doctor of physical therapy and back pain specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about the difference between SI joint dysfunction and lumbar radiculopathy, or sciatica. So we're going to jump in today about what SI joint dysfunction is, what sciatica is, can one cause the other, and how do they interrelate? Because understanding that pain is fundamental to your ability to heal and recover properly. In the Back Pain and Sciatica Support Group, we support people who are moving forward in their recovery journey, and both emotionally, physically, with the education and understanding of these problems, so they can heal holistically and take back an active lifestyle once and for all. We do that using the FMT 360 method, which is a method that I created after I herniated my disc and went through the ringer of traditional healthcare. And I found that going to specialist after specialist after specialist, getting tests and exams and paying the bills for all these things, that I got no real answers that I could actually do anything with. So it's my mission, my purpose in life to learn as much as I can so that I can help others basically out of the situation that I found myself in in debt at 24 years old from an injury that should have been avoided after playing years of sports, seeing doctors, being otherwise healthy, and you know, I just didn't understand what was going on. So let's fix this once and for all. I call that prehab over rehab, and I wanna to talk to you today about the SI joint, lower back pain and disc herniations, and how you can determine which is which and where your pain is coming from. So most important is to understand the pelvis and the lumbar spine here. So we're going to take a close up here. These are the iliums on either side. It's your hip bones here. And then you have your sacrum right down here, this triangular bone, the tailbone. Okay. You'll notice that these three bones, one, two, three, make up your pelvis. And it's so important to be able to move and control that pelvis. What happens though, you'll notice that there's no cartilage in between here. It's really bone to bone. There should be a lot of stability in the SI joint, right? Ilium sacrum SI, sacroiliac joint, okay? And you can, you can start to move that and it actually is supposed to fuse by the time we're in our 30s. That doesn't always happen. There's still some motion that goes on and that's okay. Our body likes motion as humans we are meant to move, that's a good thing. But what happens with too much motion is there can be some irritation here and it's typically lower than the lower back, pretty central and can really just stay around this area. That can be so close to the lower back, it's within inches or centimeters, it can be hard to determine. But with these few tests, you can determine what the pain is coming from, whether it is from the lower back, it is from the disc, or it is from the SI joint. So stay tuned. And let us know in the comment below what you think your diagnosis is before you actually do the exams here. That's, let's see if you are right, let's see if you are wrong, and we're looking for several yeses to really put a pin on what, what our diagnosis is, what our true diagnosis is. And the, the diagnosis and the source of pain determines our treatment plan, applies to real life, and helps us to progress through function, okay? And that's where we need to be focused on so we understand where our pain source is and how to initially get out of pain quickest so that we can be most efficient with our recovery program, all right? So through these symptoms, we have this SI joint here, right, where the ilium, again, attaches to the sacrum. We wanna see if compression adds to, adds to irritation at this joint, whether you're on the right side or left side, typically with SI joint pain, it's not both sides. So that's, that's tip number one. Compression here, when we squeeze these two bones together a little bit more, what we can do is we're gonna irritate that, but we're not gonna get symptoms going down the leg here for SI pain. We're not gonna get symptoms into the glute down the back of the hamstring and down below the calf. Tip number two, if you do have pain down the leg and into the, the calf or outside shin, then we probably are talking about a, a couple other options for things 
not SI joint pain. SI joint pain tends to be pretty localized, possibly going into the pelvis um, or pelvic floor, okay? So again, different, different areas, different pain patterns, very important to take note of. Test number one for the SI joint, what we're going to do is lie on our side here, and we're gonna have a loved one or a partner go ahead and take their hand, just kind of over the top here, and press straight down into our hips and pelvis here. Right over the top of that hip joint, so you can see this is where the hip would be. And we're going to, to find this little bony area and we're gonna press straight down as we're lying on our side. Putting about five to 10 pounds of pressure on it. Doesn't need to be like a quick, hard, you know, jab or anything. We're just trying to see, does that create some discomfort in this area? Okay, yes or no. Test number two is lying on our tummy. So this is the back of the spine here. And we're gonna take the heel of our hand right to the base of the tailbone. So right back here, just to the base of that tailbone. And we're gonna be pressing down. Again, five or 10 pounds of pressure. Does that create tension at my point? Test number three, we wanna see if a little bit of torsion, a little bit of rotation adds to that discomfort, right? Because again, these bones are supposed to be fused, but when I twist them, is that uncomfortable? And so what we'll do is lie on our side and bring that knee over and just give a little bit of force both forward and to the side here. You're asking a loved one to help you here with that hand right here and pushing through with the painful side on top. Does that create some discomfort? Okay. If we got one, two, or three yeses there, then we need to look a little bit further. Those are great special tests to determine whether the SI joint is the source of pain, all right? If you didn't get any yeses there, then we might need to start to look at this lower back here as our source of pain. And it really depends on the pain pattern. This is when reaching out to a professional can really help you to determine what's going on here. That's exactly what the total body diagnostic is meant to do. It's meant to allow us to, to have some time with you one-on-one -on -one so that we can go through and see your pain patterns, take you through different special tests and identify what a next best step is, okay? For that lower back, for any of the lower back symptoms, we're just gonna look for a quick range of motion exam. If I go backwards, does that hurt? If I go forward, does that hurt? If I go side to side, are we creating pain? Does the pain stay across the lower back? Does it go up towards the middle of the back or does it come down one or both legs? Okay, different options there. Typical sciatica coming from a disc herniation is going to come from the back, down the center of the glute and down the back of the leg it can then split one of two ways here at the back of the knee. It can go down the back center of the calf, or it can go down the outside of the shin there. And down the back center of the calf can go to the heel and out to the big toe, second toe. Down the outside shin will go to that fourth and fifth toe, depending on severity. For a disc herniation, the further down the leg that pain goes, the worse the disc herniation typically is, right? And so we can grade that joint by joint, essentially, right? Going to the hip is gonna be a better day than if the pain were to go to the knee, and you can follow that all the way down. Red flags for a disc herniation, red flags meaning I need to go to the ER, I need to see a neurologist or an orthopedic, I really need to look for care. Red flags would be a loss of bowel or bladder control, a loss of the ability to come up on the toes or bring the, bring the toes up here, so if we can't go up on the toes or on the, onto the heels and bring that foot up, and we're losing control or sensation of that foot or ankle. Those are all red flags, and we definitely want you to seek out medical attention from there ASAP. If your symptoms are still mobile, coming up and down the leg, if they jump around, even if it is going beyond the knee or into the foot occasionally, but it's coming back up, it's on one side, seek out a trusted doctor of physical therapy for support. Now, I know a lot of people have had different experiences, 
but it's just like dating at this point, right? You're looking for a practitioner who really specializes in this stuff, understands this, will give you the time of day, and will hear you so that you can have a team effort going forward so that you can resolve this once and for all, all right? We're gonna look at things like neural tension here. We're gonna look at things like what centralizes the pain, right? And what are the stability issues and the daily activities that cause that pain to still be sticking around and that continue to, to move the pain down the leg. Quick tip, worth the price of admission here. Any activity that moves the pain further down the leg, you wanna cut. You wanna just say, I don't need to push through this. I wanna just put this on hold. Let me think for a moment about how I can work smarter and not harder and just push through. How many times have you been going through an activity, you're noticing that pain in the leg is getting a little worse, and you say, I just gotta finish. I just gotta get this done. I'm just gonna go and continue, right? I would highly suggest that that's a point in time where we need to listen to our body and say, hmm, what's a different way that I can do the exact same task and get the same result? Is it using tools? Is it breaking it up into to parts? Is it using my body and stabilizing a bit differently rather than bending over, flexing or flexing and rotating, especially with those consistent motions? Can I do that in a different manner and then do these things, right? This is where functional movement therapy can help you to understand how to use your body as a tool rather than, rather than just picking the scab or trying to push through. Because no pain, all gain, makes our jokes a lot funnier than the latter, okay? So, looking at neural tension here, looking at range of motion, looking at what centralizes the pain, really, really important. Do you feel better with standing, sitting, or walking? Let me know, because that, that really helps to determine what your direction of preference is. What's gonna move that pain back up the leg and towards the back? If we can identify that quickly, it's gonna be huge. We also wanna look at neural tension. So one of the tests for this is the kick your head off test or the slump test, okay? And what we do is we take our, our leg, here we're gonna kick up and we want to see how that feels. Are we getting tightness, pull tension? That feels a little nervy. If I bring my toes back, does that feel worse? If I bring my head down, does that feel worse? Okay, that lets us know some, some information there. You might have some muscular tension, there might be some fascial tension, but if it's nervy kind of pain, and especially if it's a zinger, right? That's that zinger, electrical shock, increase uh, numbness and tingling, nervy, 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 nervy. But if we kick our leg up, you feel that tension, and we move our head back, to look up at the ceiling. What we're doing is shortening the string there. We're shortening the nerve and relaxing that nerve there. Does moving your head change the sensation in your leg? That's how we know that we're dealing with nerve here. Does that improve symptoms? If so, that's a nice exercise that you can do. It's called kick your head off. So we kick our head off. You'll notice that the lower back doesn't move here. Ideally, I'd been a, be in a chair that's nice and supported with lumbar support and or a pillow and making sure that my foot and head time together. So we're never tensing that nerve because nerves don't like to be stretched, guys. They just don't. They're sensitive by nature. I hope this was super valuable for you guys. Whatever your questions are, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Make sure to tag me so that I get notified when that comes up, all right? We're so thankful for you being a part of the group, a part of this community, and I look forward to continuing to serve you. If you have any specific questions that you'd like covered in future posts or future live trainings, make sure to tag me in those or DM me directly. Have a great day, you guys. We'll talk to you soon.